Hello, brand new smart TV. Let's get you connected to the Wi-Fi so that we can watch cool shows, shall we? Come again. Son of a mink hoarder. Problem. You have a device that you need to connect to Wi-Fi, but it only supports a wired connection, AKA ethernet cables. So what can we do to fix this pain in the biscuits? We could take the stupidly simple route and just run a really long ethernet cable through the house and disguise it so that it doesn't look so awkward and tacky. Hello. Nope, still looks awkward and tacky. Okay, so basically we want something that can convert Wi-Fi to wired. And the closest thing that most people already have is a Wi-Fi router, except it takes a wired connection and converts it to Wi-Fi, which is the opposite of what we're wanting. All the components we need are there, we just need to somehow reverse how it works. Right now, most wireless routers come with their own manufacturer-specific software called firmware. You can view this software by typing in your router's IP address into a browser. It often asks for credentials, which if you've never changed them, you can find them here. In logging in, it shows you all of your router's different options. Some high-end routers may have an option called a wireless bridge mode that turns it into a wireless to wired bridge, which is exactly what we're wanting. But no, you don't have a high-end router because you spent all your flab jabbing money on an expensive device that doesn't even have a flab jabbing wireless card. But that's okay, because what you do have is a crappy wireless router that your internet company probably gave you and a cheap wireless router that you've had lying around for probably five years now just praying for another chance to be used. And lucky for you, that's all you need because there's a way that you can upgrade the software on that five-year-old router so that we can turn it into a wireless to wired converter that we so desperately need. The first thing that you wanna do is find out what type of router that you have. Then go to the DDWRT website and search for it to see if they support your router. And if they don't, you can try Tomato or OpenWRT as alternatives but if your router isn't listed in any of those, then you're kind of out of luck. Now you can download the DDWRT firmware and follow the instructions on their wiki for your specific router to get it installed. Here's how it went for my 2008 ASUS WL520GU router. First, I downloaded the DDWRT firmware specifically for it, and then I went to the ASUS website to download the ASUS restoration utility. Then I ran it in XP compatibility mode to install it on my computer. Then I went into my network settings and disabled my wireless card and right clicked on my wired connection and went to properties. Then I went to the IPv4 settings and created an IP address of 192.168.1.10 with the subnet mask of 255.255.255.0. After saving that, I ran the ASUS restoration utility as administrator and loaded up the DDWRT firmware. Before clicking to load it, I had to set up the router. So for my specific router, I had to make sure it was powered off, then press the reset button and power it back on. At some point, the power button on the front should start blinking. Then you can plug it into your computer and finish uploading the DDWRT firmware. Success! Now my router is supercharged. So now I can open up a web browser and type in 192.168.1.1 to get to the DDWRT settings. So now I can log into the new software and click on the wireless tab. I changed the mode to client bridge so that I can create a wireless bridge and then the network mode to the same as my main router and the SSID should also match the wireless signal from my main router. Make sure bridged mode is selected and then click apply. Then click on the wireless security tab and set the security mode, WPA algorithms, and password to match that of your main router and click save again. Wicked sweet, almost done. Going back to my network settings, I changed the static IP address to fit that of my main router's network and then set the default gateway and DNS server to match the IP address of my main wireless router. 
Saving that, I am now magically on the internet. At this point, you can plug it into your TV, gaming console, printer, or wired computer and give it a static IP address and default gateway and DNS as we just did, and now it should work. Okay, friends and loved ones, or just friends, we just took a major frustrating problem, slapped it in the face, and said this is a January-February conversation, so march yourself on out of here, sucka. All right, what ideas would you like me to cover next? Submit or vote for your favorites at tinkernut.com slash ideas. Click here to watch more videos like this, and if you got any value out of my show and would like to give some value back, please feel free to like, subscribe, comment, follow me on social media, or donate at tinkernut.com slash donate. All right, that's it for this tutorial. For more, go to tinkernut.com.